again, my name is Nora Betusef Lacey, and uh, I am uh, picked to be, uh, and I'm honored to be picked to be your speaker. I'm a biologist. I also have a degree in uh, business administration. So uh, I will try to present this lecture in different uh, format. I will have entrepreneurship mixed with biology, mixed with uh, philanthropy. Uh, I will try to present the scientific aspect of this lecture in a lay language so people that are not biologists can enjoy the lecture as much. Uh, so uh, welcome uh, to this lecture. I think uh, the reason I am picked for, to present this topic of entrepreneurship is because I have founded my own company. I am currently the president and CEO of a biotechnology company called Cellmark Corporation. Okay, Cellmark, this is the 20th year anniversary of Cellmark. We incorporated the Cellmark in Austin, Texas in 1994. So this year in September of 24th, we are gonna have a 20th anniversary celebration for the company. The company employs 90 employees. Uh, almost 80% of them are uh, scientists, biologists, degree biologists, including three medical doctors and two PhDs. Uh, just to mention, 15% of my employees are Assyrian. So, <laughs> so if you're a biologist, you uh, have a degree in biology, apply at Selmar Corporation. You will get a preferential treatment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about this topic because I uh, do consider myself an entrepreneur. I uh, was a single mom with two daughters, eight and 10 years old, when I quit my job, borrowed $5,000 from my mother, and started Cellmark Corporation in Austin, Texas. Cellmark started in my kitchen. I personally developed first 20 products of Cellmark Corporation in my kitchen, and now the company is operating out of a beautiful, 30,000 square foot facility in Rockland, California, Rockland being north of Sacramento area. Uh, Cellmark is in the business of uh, researching, developing, manufacturing in vitro diagnostic product for cancer detection. And uh, I am just very proud to say it is, uh, now it's a global company that is distributing its product all over the world. Cellmark is uh, managed and operated by uh, my family. I am the president and CEO. My husband who's sitting back there is uh, Dr. Mike Lacey, who is the medical director of the company. My elder daughter, Sarah Agassi, is a lawyer. So she's the VP of legal affair. And my younger daughter, Rochelle Agassi, is, has a degree in advertising and she manages our marketing department. Well, my question to you is, do you know who was the first entrepreneur and business people in the history of humankind? Maybe yes. <laughs> Our own ancestors from 6,000 plus year before Christ, Sumerians, 6,000 plus years before Christ, decided to, uh, to settle in Mesopotamian area. At that time, when they were doing that, when they were making that decision, humankind was a hunter and gatherer. People were basically walking the earth, looking for food and survival, where our ancestors decided that they're not gonna do that and they're gonna settle in the Mesopotamian area and live their lives there. Because they settled and they were no longer walking the earth, they, they invented farming because they had to have a supply of food, so they start farming they invented dams and irrigation. They planted weeds and barley. And very soon they learned that they have surplus of food, food that can feed their tribes uh, with little land uh, 
it, that is needed compared to when they were uh, hunters and gatherers. So uh, actually, this farming, this surplus of food dictated that they should uh, develop language, writing, first mathematics, and first bookkeeping. They use clay tokens like this, very similar to our current uh, currency and money. And they had people exchange these tokens for food, for barleys and, uh, and wheat. And uh, basically, because they had surplus, they had to manage this inventory. And that was the best way they could manage their inventory at that time. And basically, because there was uh, a land of plenty, that attracted a lot of people to Mesopotamian area. And that was the time that first city was established, first university, first library, a lot of inventions that I don't have time to go over, but our ancestors were basically geniuses walking the earth at that time. With so many people coming and getting attracted, a lot of monuments went out. And uh, actually I have a picture where where a mock-up of one of the cities is made for people to tour. And basically that area became so wealthy and so uh, advanced. Uh, actually, it skipped one of my pictures. Uh, it was a picture of an Assyrian in a caravan of horses because there was so much food that Assyrians were able, or Sumerians were able to take this food uh, on a trade route, on a caravan, and sell it for, uh, you know, different returns, like whatever they needed from other tribes. So they brought wealth back to Mesopotamia, and uh, with all the monuments, with all the people, the first city, with first library, basically that area was known as a cradle of civilization. So uh, here, science and history are in agreement that current modern caldo Assyrians are direct descendant of their ancestors, Sumerian ancestors that live in Mesopotamia. There was a program on Fox News where Fox News employs an Assyrian reporter, her name is Ninva Dinha, and they basically did a testing, a uh, genetic profile testing on her, and they traced her genetic uh, profile back to 1400 years before Christ from her ancestor that reside in Mesopotamian area because the genetic profile of people of Mesopotamia is very unique and they were able to trace her back to that many years. Yeah. So basically the test, the science now proves that our, we have been as Assyrian given a genetic gifts from our ancestors, gift of smart ingenuity, mm -hmm. and I hope you guys appreciate that. Fast track to today, in today's time. Do, would you know who is the smartest, most innovative entrepreneur living in our time frame? Who do you think it would be? Huh? <laughs> it's the second. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Is it? Yep. Steve Jobs, yeah. And is he a serious? <laughs> Do you agree it's Steve Jobs? Yeah. Basically walked, you know, as a walking genius. Yes, he has enjoyed the same Assyrian genetic a gift that we have because his biological father is an Assyrian from Lebanon. Who do you think is the wealthiest man living today? Carlos Slim. Carlos Slim is an Assyrian born in Mexico from Assyrian parents from Lebanon. Well, as a biologist, I was always very curious to know, yes, we are given this genetic gift, but does genetic really control our lives? And how does genetic affect us day to day? 
we know genes and DNAs are considered blueprint of life. It dictates the color of our eyes, dictate the color of our hair, the way we look, our health. We inherit all this through our genes. But how much control these wonderful genes have over our lives today? Actually, this is a very interesting topic in molecular biology. And uh, I will simply explain uh, that in Stanford University, for example, there is a research that uh, basically what they did, they took three identical cells with the same genetic material. They put these three identical cells in three different environments called petri dishes in laboratory. And they grew these cells. Because these identical cells were in different environment, one grew to be muscles, one grew to be fat cells, the other one grew to be bone cells. So what does that tell you? If the genetically these three cells are identical, that proved a point that environment affects the genetics. And that is actually a very exciting field of study. It's called epigenetics. Epi means above, and epigenetics mean the factors that are above genetics makeup. So uh, I'll give you one more example so you can uh, clearly understand epigenetics because it's important. Um, when I wake up and I see the face of my uh, husband, who I love dearly, there is actually in the morning, there are very good hormones that are released into my body. Dopamine, growth hormone, hormones that will promote my health and my happiness. Uh, that's why people that are in love have a certain glow. Everybody thinks that they have certain glow. But these people are super healthy because of these hormones that are released in their body. So they look like they're glowing. The opposite applies. When people live in a very stressful location under duress, Stress hormones are released in their body. Hormones like cortisol, like inflammatory agents that are released in their body and prepares their body for fight and for survival. So in a body that is healthy and happy, full of dopamines and happy hormones, our genetic profile is read correctly. Our genius genes come out and help us express them. In bodies, in environment where people are stressed and all they think about is survival, these genetic gifts cannot be read. Body, the environment, overwrite the genetic gifts. So they cannot enjoy them as others do. So that's why while our ancestors were hunters and gatherers walking the earth, they were just like everybody else. When they decided to reside and stop moving, stop traveling and walking the earth, and they lived in Mesopotamia, that's where they relaxed, they found peace of mind, and they started to invent the inventions that are so innovative, so important, that basically has changed the history of humankind. So one of the first factor is to keep in mind, for success, you need peace of mind. And that's happiness comes. A lot of people would love to start their own business and find financial uh, freedom and uh, enjoy the wealth and everything that comes with owning and the freedom that comes with owning a business. But you all need to know that the first thing that is needed to be successful in business is to have peace of mind. We need to live, we need to have an environment that is peaceful so our genetic gifts can come out and help us be successful. Some people also, uh, when they're not in business, they are envious of successful business people. I would say it is best 
instead of being envious, study the successful people and see what are the factors. What kind of habit do successful people have that do promote their success? I am going to try to present some of these factors that have played a major role in my life. And I listed them here. One of the requirements for success is work ethic. Work ethic is something innate. Doesn't matter if you work for yourself or you work for somebody else, your work ethic stays as who you are, as your habit, as your standard of living. And only people with strong work ethic could be successful in business. People that take pride in what they do would succeed in the business. Competence. Sex successful uh, business people are always in a mode of self-evaluation. They always want to find and learn about themselves and their competency. And they usually build a business around their competency. Passion. Passion is an energy second to none. So passion will motivate someone to go through the trouble of starting a business. Passion and competency together will help uh, a business person, an entrepreneur, to succeed, basically. Confidence. Confidence is uh, very important. Everybody, even successful people, have challenges, but they put their best foot forward, especially for people like you with genetic gifts. You need to be very, very confident about yourself in business. Courage. Courage uh, is a must have. Uh, fear is normal. Even successful business people fear a lot of situation. But I have learned one thing in business, that successful business people, the difference between successful business people and rest of the world is that successful business people fall, but they recoup very quickly. They don't let their challenges hold them back versus some people are scarred by failures, are scarred by fears. And uh, some people take longer to get over it. And for some people, they never get over their challenges. But uh, successful people recoup very quickly. Perceptive. Uh, Entrepreneurs need to be perceptive. They need to look at the anomalies for success. They need to study what would make their company grow and offer a service that is second to none and unique. Uh, and usually, if business people only ask their customers, customers will tell them what they need to do and what they need to have to be successful. Uh, progressive. Uh, successful people are progressive when they always look for ways to improve their business and the services that they offer. Patience. Successful people are patient because they know good. you cannot build a successful business overnight. You cannot even build it fast enough because good thing takes time to build. Successful people need to be patient enough to, and willing to put the time and energy to build a foundation for success. My last point, but not least, is perseverance. Actually, Steve Jobs said, I'm convinced that about half of what separates successful entrepreneur is pure perseverance. In my opinion, is the most important factor or requirement to have in business. Perseverance is when things are going wrong and tough, you persevere it. You, you become resilient. You commit to stay in business because that's the only way you will succeed in business. You have to stay in business when things are down because when things are down, one day they will go up. So perseverance 
is definitely the key to success. Entrepreneurs usually are self-taught. They come up with an idea and they build a business around it. So this slide says, whatever you are thinking, think bigger. Okay, ideas. Ideas are the key to start a business. There are so many ideas that just circulate in entrepreneur's mind. The smart entrepreneur will write them down because if they don't write them down, they will either forget them or these ideas will keep you awake all night long. So the best thing is to write them down because these ideas, good ideas will create a winning strategy in your business. I personally am a true believer on a business goal. I operate off of a goal. If I don't have a goal, I don't do anything. So business goal is very important. I will actually share with you how I started Cellmark. Uh, as I said, I was a single mom, eight and 10 year old, and I took my girls to see a, um, a designer show house. Uh, a beautiful house that was designed by designer. I like design and I like art, so I went to see this house. And at that time, I was, um, you know, working for a company, making uh, my end meet, but by no mean, it was anything to write home about. So when I saw this house, I said, oh my God, I got to have one of these homes and I got to live in one of these homes. And Believe it or not, that was my business goal. When I came home and I looked how much I'm earning, what I'm doing, I said, there's no way on earth I can live in one of these homes. So I just took the risk, quit my job with $5,000 from my mom, started Cellmark, and I think I have reached my goal of having beautiful homes that I feel very right at home in at this stage of the game. So having a business goal is always gonna keep you on track, is gonna help you persevere and never quit because God knows there were so many times I, I should have quit, but I didn't because I was just so into my goals and I had to reach it. So I was very goal oriented as you can tell. Communication is very important for entrepreneur and business owner to be able to tell the world, employees, customers, everybody that one is involved with, what he is all about and what is the mission of his company and what is he willing to do. Uh, entrepreneur needs to stay focused, organized and productive just to be a role model to show the world what he expect from those that work for him. Also, there's a saying, running a business is an art and science. The art is your passion, the science is your business, financial model where cash is king. So you can tell entrepreneurs are very money motivated people and there's nothing wrong with that. Smart entrepreneurs, as I said, they are always self-evaluating to see what is their core competencies. And they always put a team together that complements their competencies. It is not the best idea to go hire people just like you. You always want to bring people that will bring new talents to the table to offer your company. So putting a team of that type is very helpful. Smart entrepreneurs know that they have to do all they can to make this team a winning team, to help everybody in team win and be successful. The team can be employees, can be customers, can be vendors, because the success of entrepreneur's business is dependent on the success of the team. It is a good idea to have mentors and consultants to bounce idea with and grow and be, become more knowledgeable. Okay, one of the biggest challenge for entrepreneur is work-life balance. 
especially when entrepreneur is starting a new business, his time and energy is so invested in his business that he truly needs a very supportive team behind him. One of the most effective and important factors, believe it or not, is parents' blessing. Actually, that's biblical too. When parents bless their child and their children, that gives their children a sense of confidence that they can do anything because they have the buy-in from the parents. So I hope there are a lot of parents in this room and you will do that for your children because it is so critical. I have been lucky that my parents were very supportive and they always pushed me to think outside the box and venture outside my comfort zone. And they blessed me along the way. And I hope all Assyrian parents do that for their children. Uh, second factor is supportive family, especially supportive spouse, because without spouse's support, no matter what business you're in, you're not gonna make it. Spouse's support is critical to the success of an entrepreneur. Uh, empathetic friends are very important. When friends understand that you have a startup company, you need to put energy and time. You no longer have time to socialize as, as you did before. So for these friends to stick around and be there behind you, help you out is very important. Also for that entrepreneur, it's very important to have daily goals prioritized. So when these daily goals are over, all the goals are met for that particular day, entrepreneur knows that he needs to go home and have a life. Entrepreneur also needs to be a good delegator. He needs to delegate to employees and family members as many tasks as he or she can possibly do because there's always so much to do. So being a good delegator always help for that person to find time to have a balance between work and life. Last factors that I'm gonna talk about but not least is faith. I truly believe that a major reason for success in business could be faith. Because I believe if the business is aligned with the will of God, God will provide. God truly do provide. Uh, I, I have so many stories to tell you about how God has played a role and has sent angels to do things in my business and then leave. Uh, actually, I don't mind sharing uh, for a few minutes some of these stories. These are true stories. Uh, when my business was small, it was me, my partner, and a secretary that took incoming calls. I was working in the lab. My partner was in charge of administration, accounting, IT, and computers and stuff. And of course, secretary took incoming calls from whoever called. We had products, we had catalog, but we didn't have anybody to market these product, go out and sell them. So we were kind of wondering, me and partner talking, how we can sell these products. We cannot even get out of the company to go out and meet customers. So we were having lunch discussing this and we came back from lunch. There was a lady sitting in um, our reception area. Her name was Claire. And we said, hi, uh, who are you? And she said, I'm a salesperson and I am here to take your company to the next level. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we took her in the, you know, in the office and start talking to, to her. And she said, I want to sell your product and you pay me purely on commission. If I sell, you pay me. If I don't sell, then you know, no harm's done. So Claire start traveling and meeting customers and for 90 days. At the end of 90 days, she came to me and my partner and she said, you guys have great reagents and your customers know about it and they want to, but you guys need to have an instrument because at that time, you know, uh, companies that we competed, they had reagents, chemicals and biological chemicals and reagents plus 
an instrument that made uh, these chemicals went on to operate. And she said, I really will have a hard time making a living if you guys don't have an instrument. And uh, at that time, we were startup and we couldn't afford uh, much, basically. And we said, I'm sorry, we cannot afford hiring a mechanical engineer and produce an instrument. Uh, we are just who we are. And she said, then I'm sorry, I need to leave. So Claire came, she traveled for 90 days, introduced us to the world, and then she exited. Then we said, okay, we need, if we are gonna do the sales, we need to bring at least an employee to do shipping. So when the orders come in, that person can ship these orders to customers so we can have a day or two to go see customers and sell. So we put an ad in the newspaper and all of a sudden a man walked in and he was an engineer, a mechanical engineer. He said he is a very successful mechanical engineer who sold his business in New York and he made so much money and all he wants is a job. He doesn't even care how much the job pays. He is wealthy. He doesn't care about the money. Give me minimum wage and I will do whatever you want. I said, come right in. I know where you're coming from. God has sent you. So Kim came and joined uh, Selmark as the fourth employee. He came and learned the business. He came as a shipping clerk and he said, why don't you guys put, let me just put an instrument together for you for very cheap and I can do it. I can do it out of my garage. And then he started talking to us about, you know, the specs for this instrument and he started thinking. We even had an idea. We went and patented the idea. People come when God wants your business to succeed, when it's aligned to his will. He will send his angel. He will send what you need. It is very effective to pray and ask God what you need, but it's as important for you to meditate. It means keep quiet and let God talk to you. Let God tell you what needs to be done for your business. So meditation is as important and asking through prayers. When he blesses you, enjoy it. it. It is from God. It's not from you. Give the credit where credit is due. And always keep in mind that when God blesses you and blesses your business, you as an entrepreneur, he wants you to give back to the world. You cannot just take, take, take and not give back to the world because most of your blessing is when you give back to the world. God has designed you to give back to the world. That's the happiest state you can be in when you know that your contribution, your money, your brain power is making a difference in somebody's life. Philanthropy is... is is the most important part of uh, giving back to the world, is giving to the needy that needs your support. It is very important to give to causes that are not heavily funded. For example, we're in cancer business. We know how well-funded cancer you know, is. But give your f money, give your resources to, to causes that are not well funded. We as a Syrian have a very important cause to support right now. It is our brothers and sisters in the worst, worst time of their lives. We can either give financial support, but financial support is not the only way of philanthropy. You can also do other things. Mm -hmm. 
you can give your time, your energy, your brain power to come, come up with solution to problems. We have seen that your voice, when it's raised, is as important as your wallet. So keep in mind, when the prayer of these precious children come true, and you're involved by giving back to the world, you will be blessed. This is my last slide. And I must say that as entrepreneur, you have a lot of responsibilities. You're in charge of your business. Your employees rely on you. Your family relies on you. Your causes rely on you. But the most important person in your life is you. So you need to take care of yourself to be able to take care of others. Stay healthy. Keep your body, your environment in there, healthy and happy and in peace so your body can take full advantage of your genetic gifts. Your ancestors did that 6,000 years before Christ, and you can do it too.